imprecise words. When I was looking for verses from some rap songs to break down for this video, I had a hard time finding a verse that wasn't fairly straightforward. It left me with the question, how is Earl able to create so much depth in his music with verses that are so simple? After taking a closer look at the writing of some rap songs and really challenging myself to pay attention to every single line and really think about its purpose in the track, I think I found the answer. Let's take a look at lines from one of my favorite tracks off some rap songs, Shattered Dreams. These lines are really simple, but I don't think you would be reaching or projecting if you said that you could write an entire essay about these four lines. Not a single line is wasted. Every lyric reframes and refocuses the point being made. The key to creating depth with simplicity is timing. The first two lines here are fairly straightforward. I don't really need to break them down. He's saluting his fellow drinkers. It's a perfectly fine set of lines that you'd see in a ton of rap songs across all genres. But what takes these two lines to the next level are the following lines after. The first two lines are the setup and the final two are the punchline. So the question that Earl asks, why doesn't anyone told me that I'm sinking? It cuts like a knife. It, it turns the mood from casual and nonchalant in the first two lines to emotionally devastating. But this line wouldn't have the same effect without the first two seemingly simple lines to throw the alley-oop. Like I said, it's all about timing. But that's not all going on in this set of lines. The rhetorical question that Earl asks actually has an answer. Why has nobody told me that I'm sinking? Because nobody's trying to get it clean. Not a single line wasted. So when you're writing your own raps or poetry or whatever, really think about that. If you're trying to write about something that's complex or layered, you don't necessarily have to use big words or this complicated phraseology or really elaborate over the top surreal imagery. Sometimes it really isn't about what you say, but more how you say it. And I think these lines are a perfect example of really impactful narrative timing. I haven't even gotten to the fourth line yet because we still have more to talk about with just these three lines. If you look a little bit deeper, why isn't anyone trying to get it clean? Because they've got no peace. We've got a call back to the first line. And that's all a result of timing and Earl knowing what words to put where. But there's still more in just this verse. When you look at the fourth line, why nobody tell me I can leave, you could think that that's just a line for emphasis, driving home the dramatic punchline of the third line. And that is true, but there's also more because Earl doesn't waste any lines. And as a writer, you shouldn't either. The final line illustrates that the sentiment, nobody trying to get it clean, isn't true. It's a mindset. It's a nihilistic outlook on existence that frequently occurs in all different kinds of addiction. Everyone else is doing this thing or coping with life this way. It's just the way things are and the way that life goes. But Earl says that no one told him that this statement isn't true, that there was a way out, there was another option, that he could leave this lifestyle and this mindset. Like, this stuff is beautiful. I mean, it's depressing, but it's also beautiful and powerful, and he didn't need Method Man level wordplay to achieve it. Sometimes timing is everything, and simply knowing what lines to put where is crucial to elevating your material and your message. Another thing that Earl is really, really good at, and it builds on this theme of simplistic depth, is that he's able to not just convey thematic depth with simplistic writing. He's also able to convey emotional depth with simplistic writing. And this is super, super key for writers to study. Let's look at the chorus of Shattered Dreams to see what I'm talking about. So again, these lyrics are somewhat simplistic in nature, but in the context of the song, they're incredibly profound. These lines come before line one. They open up the track. But in my opinion, once they follow the verse and you have a little bit more context of what he's rapping about, they hit even harder. Again, timing and context are so key in this situation. Knowing the context of the first verse where Earl represents an addict wondering how they got into the position they were in, the chorus gives an even more detailed explanation to why nobody's trying to get it clean. Earl expresses feelings of anti-socialism, disassociation, suicidal ideation. This is all haunting and very dark stuff. And expressing these topics artistically can be extremely overwhelming and even embarrassing. Everyone wants to express how they feel, but no one wants to be that guy. But this chorus in Earl's writing shows you that you can express these feelings, even if they're negative emotions, without coming off as try hard or too edgy or anything in that realm. He keeps it straightforward. He's not trying to make it cute. He's just telling you how he feels. He even says, 
It's a feeling. It's just a feeling. But this feeling contributes to the nobody trying to get a clean mindset. And then Earl wakes up wondering, how did nobody tell me that this feeling was optional? So it's not like he's just placing the blame on himself for being standoffish and anemic, right? He's saying, no one else told me. No one else was looking out for me because nobody's trying to get it clean, like I said before. So let's look at the lines in a little bit more detail to see how the context and the timing of them serves the first verse and, and how the verse and the chorus really complement each other thematically all through just simple placement of lines. So you have right here, it says, ease up, free smoke, and blank need it, right? So that's important to note when you're considering the questions of the first verse. How did I get here? Why didn't anyone tell me that this place was bad? Why is nobody trying to get it clean? Because these people need it. They need the substance abuse to find peace, right? And this is personal interpretation, but it works in the flow of the rest of the song. Mask off, mask on, we trick or treat in. That goes into those feelings of disassociation, not actually being connected with the world, not actually being honest about how you feel and the help that you might need, which again contributes to the question, why didn't anybody tell me I could leave? I could keep going on and on and on, and not every single interpretation is exact, of course, art is subjective, but the fact that I can go on this long about a track that on its surface, when you look at the verbiage, when you look at the rhyme scheme or whatever, seems simplistic, that goes to show you Earl has meticulously crafted this verse, even if it doesn't seem like it on the surface. So before I kind of get carried away, let's kind of summarize what writers can take away from this track in its totality. In my opinion, I think this track and Earl's writing in general demonstrates the benefits of using simplistic writing to convey really deep themes. If you're a writer and you're also looking to express and expand on themes that are really emotional, really heavy, keep these things in mind when you're writing because the easier your art is to digest, the more people it's going to affect. Next time you're listening to Earl, really think about that and really think about why is this resonating with me so much? What you'll find is that it's all about matching depth with some Simplicity. If you like this video and you want to see more lyrical breakdowns, please hit the subscribe button. I've got a lot of videos coming up with this new style of content. If you're a fan of Earl, I highly recommend you check out my last lyrical breakdown video. I broke down Billy Woods, who's a frequent collaborator of Earl and obviously has inspired a lot of Earl's art. So definitely check that out if you're interested. And yeah, with that being said, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.